Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kilowatt. My name is Bodhi, and I am your host. And I have fixed a problem that has been bugging me for at least the last week, if not 10 days, since I got my new computer. When I went, when I would go to record uh, in Logic, when I would talk, I would have a little bit of echo. It wouldn't show up on the actual um, recording, but I would have an echo when I was trying to talk to you folks. And that's very distracting. And I finally figured it out um, quite by accident. So if you ever have that problem in Logic Pro, uh, go to your settings and turn off software monitoring in audio. And then it goes away and the madness stops. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our EV news this week. Mack Truck has launched its medium-duty electric truck. Um, And that's it. (laughs) Congratulations to Mack Truck. I I don't have much more to say on that. It looks like every other Mack Truck on the road, but it's electric. Volkswagen has confirmed that the ID Buzz will debut in the United States this summer. This will be a slightly longer version than its European cousin. We have no other information at this time as far as range and price goes, but I'm sure we'll we'll get that soon. And I don't know if debut actually means launch. That just might mean that they're going to show it off and launch it later. And since we're talking about Volkswagen Group, let's talk about Scout Motors. Scout Motors has chosen South Carolina to build their new EV truck and SUV plant. The $2 billion facility will be located just north of Columbia and sit on about 1,600 acres. The plant could employ up to 4,000 workers, and if everything works out, produce 200,000 EVs a year. And real quick, I need to apologize for my voice. Uh, It's very early in the morning. It's 5 o'clock in the morning here, and my allergies are going crazy. So my voice is a little rough this morning, and it's cracking and, and wheezing a little bit. So sorry about that. Moving on, Ford halted production of the F-150 Lightning after a battery fire. We know that that production will resume on March 13th. So sounds like, or hopefully it sounds like they got everything taken care of there. Quick side note, one of the local dealerships brought a Ford F-150 Lightning down to my wife's work. And to this point, my wife, my wife has not liked any of the electric pickup trucks that I've showed her. But in real life, she thought the F-150 Lightning looked very nice. Uh, for the price, she thought the interior was lacking. But other than that, she had good things to say about the truck. Speaking of trucks, Lordstown Motors has sold a total of six Endurance EV pickups and has produced around 40. Uh, It's nowhere to go but up for Lordstown at this point. Lordstown has had a lot of issues. Most of those issues are a result of founder, original CEO, and no longer CEO, Steve Burns and his team. There may or may not have been some fraud in terms of reservation numbers, and maybe some of the members of the executive team selling stock before a hit piece came out from Hindenburg Research, you know, you know, stuff like that, that tarnishes the company's reputation. I do want Lordstown Motors to succeed, and not because I want Steve Burns and the rest of the executive team that kind (laughs) of messed the company up from the beginning to succeed, because I'm almost certain they all still have stock. I want Lordstown to succeed because many, if not all of the employees who work there have stock in the company, and I don't want to see the employees fail. Now, having said that, when Lordstown announced their truck way back when, I don't even know, remember when it was at this point, 2017, 2018, I thought, oh, this is a really nice looking truck, a little futuristic. Now, when you compare the Lordstown Endurance to the other EV trucks on the market, it does not look futuristic. It looks kind of clunky and dated. So hopefully they're able to turn that design around so it's a more appealing truck. All right, that last story was a little bit of a bummer. So let's pick the mood up with a really cool tech story. Hyundai says that its electronic leveling control can improve range and protect the battery pack. So Hyundai has this new system that will automatically raise or lower the vehicle by 2.3 inches or 6 centimeters. The system can also be adjusted up or down to make it easier to get in and out of the car. 
And you may be thinking to yourself, didn't he just do a story, (laughs) maybe even as soon as last week, because I can't remember what I say in any of these shows, about the Model S and Model X adjusting suspension depending on bumpy roads and speed bumps and things like that? Uh, Well, this is a little bit different because the Model S and the Model X use an air suspension, where Hyundai, they're using a hydraulic system with a series of sensors that will automatically determine the optimal ride height. So in situations where it makes sense for the vehicle to try and increase range, the vehicle will actually lower. But in situations where you might be on bumpy roads, or according to Hyundai, if you're you're in a situation where you might damage the battery pack, the vehicle will actually uh, increase in height. So that's pretty cool. I am very interested that they're doing it with the hydraulic system rather than an air system. Honestly, I'm not sure one is better than the other. It's just different implementations, but I'm excited to see how this works. They're calling this new technology the electronic leveling control system. So not a very good marketing term, but maybe by the time it hits cars, they'll actually have a a marketing term for this. We're going to round out our EV news with some battery recycling news. EV battery recycling company Redwood Materials says that their pilot recycling program is 95% efficient. So Redwood started recycling EV batteries last year from Ford and Volvo. Redwood has also partnered with VW Group and recently secured a $2 billion loan. So congratulations to Redwood. All right, that is it for EV news this week. Before we jump into the Tesla news, I would like to mention that there's a new episode of Shuffle Playlist, which is the podcast, the other podcast that I do with my buddy Chris, and we pick one song and we give ourselves uh, 10 minutes. We have to say everything that we like about the song and discuss it in under 10 minutes. Uh, It's a lot of fun. This week was my pick, and I picked No Time for Crying by My Pizza My World. It's a kind of a punky, bluegrassy type song. There is a name for the type of music that they do, but it's escaping me at the moment. But it's a really good song. It's one of my favorites. I listen to it at least once a week. So just look in the show notes. There's a link to the Shuffle playlist. And then also, if you would like to support this show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash kilowatt, or you can go to Acast Plus. The links are also in the show notes. This show has two sources of income. One is advertising, the other is the kindness of our patrons. I'm going to be honest with you, advertising doesn't make that much money, nor does my Patreon. So I'm not out here trying to make a buck off this podcast, but I am trying to pay for it. So if you are interested in supporting the show, check out the links in the show notes. All right, let's move into our Tesla news. Tesla has started slowly rolling out FSD beta version 11. Elon has cautioned beta testers, letting them know that it still needs some work. Some, or at least one, Model X owners have taken delivery of vehicles equipped with hardware 4. Jason Clinton was one of the lucky Model X owners. Jason noticed something different about his new Model X, and he was talking to a technician, and the technician confirmed that his Model X was equipped with hardware 4. That's great news. That's exciting. The downside is autopilot and FSD aren't really working yet. And we knew when Hardware 4 was released, some of the capabilities that we see in Hardware 3 would be reduced until Hardware 4 can be fully brought online. Well, it sounds like none of these features are working for Jason, which is a bummer. The positive thing is Tesla has shown that while they strip away some of the features at first, they do continue to advance their vehicles well past uh, what they were when you bought them. In Jason's case right now, he has something that doesn't work, so he doesn't have far to go. But yeah, this is good news. Good news all around. In related news, the updated service manuals for Model S and Model X show a dummy camera grouped in with the car's forward-facing by camera. So this is what the manual has to say. The bi-camera assembly has three cutouts for camera camera lens assemblies, but one of the cutouts is populated with a dummy camera. So you may be asking yourself, why in the world would they ship the cars with a dummy camera that does absolutely nothing? The answer is, we don't know. 
Maybe there are supposed to be three cameras, and because of shortages, they only shipped two, and then they'll like issue kind of like a recall or have people come into the service center to get that third camera installed. Tesla Arati pointed out that the hardware four cameras are higher def than the old cameras and hardware three, so it shouldn't need a third camera. Maybe the third camera is coming in a different version of hardware four. Maybe the dummy camera is actually doing something, which is doubtful. Or maybe Tesla had too many old three camera enclosures for hardware three and they wanted to save money. So they just threw it in the hardware four cars instead of throwing them out. I don't know the answer to this, but I feel confident at some point we'll find out. All right, for our next story, I'm going to sound a little bit like uh, a moron. Just so you know, I can't figure out a way to say this that makes sense without sounding dumb. So here we go. ARK Invest is an investment management group that has invested a lot of money in Tesla. Here are four important moves that Tesla made at its investor day that ARK thinks are important. And honestly, we talked about all of these things in our three-part series on investor day. But when Kathy Wood and her team speak, uh, more people listen than listen to this show. So I'm just going to cover them because they think it's important. Tesla is going to produce 100% of its controllers. And those controllers will be connected via low latency Ethernet, which will allow Tesla to, one, lighten up the vehicle because the wiring harness doesn't have to be so complicated, and two that'll allow them to more easily diagnose issues within the system because everything has a local controller. Uh, One of the other things that they mention is Tesla's switch to the 48 volt battery architecture, which will allow them to lighten up the vehicle, but it will also reduce power losses by 16 fold. And then finally, we have Tesla's transition to a parallel assembly process, which is basically the, the car is manufactured in a straight line. And we talked about some of those manufacturing changes that Tesla is making with the next generation platform on those episodes. So I'm not going to go into it again since it hasn't even been a week since we talked about this stuff. Elon has said that the next gen Tesla platform will run mostly in autonomous mode. Now, that might be true, but right now autopilot and full self-driving are kind of under some scrutiny, if you haven't heard. And Elon is being criticized for promising FSD. It's right around the corner. It's right around the corner. At the beginning of next year, we're going to have this. And in reality, we're still at a level two autonomy, which is where everybody else is. So it's not like Tesla's ahead of everyone in that regard. I do think Tesla has a very good system, but it's not. they're not level three or four or five, and they've had quite the head start. Tesla's also being sued by shareholders over FSD, uh, which we're going to talk about in a moment. And the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration has several investigations in regards to Tesla's full self-driving and autopilot. So at this point, it probably makes a lot of sense for Elon just not to say anything about autonomous driving because it'll probably be used against him at some point in time in the future. And honestly, not only the future, but the present, because Elon Musk, Zachary Kirkhorn, Deepak Ahuja, and Tesla are being sued by shareholders over Tesla's claims about autopilot and full self-driving safety. Now, Elon Musk is obviously the CEO of Tesla. Zachary Kirkhorn is the CFO, and Deepak was the former CFO. The suit is seeking unknown damages for shareholders of the company from February 19th, 2019 to February 17th, 2023. Shareholders noted that Tesla's share price took several hits when Autopilot and FSD's safety was investigated by the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration and the Securities and Exchange Commission. The lawsuit claims that Tesla defrauded shareholders over the last four years by making misleading statements about autopilot and FSD technologies. According to Inside EVs, the lawsuit also claims that Tesla may have hidden the cause of some fatal crashes. 
I don't know if this is part of the lawsuit or not, but a few weeks ago we were talking about Tesla's autopilot video that they had um, that showed a Tesla leaving an employee's home. It drove through complicated intersections. It went uh, on the freeway and ended up at Tesla's headquarters where it dropped off an employee at the front and then parked itself. Well, that's not exactly what happened. In reality, the car made several mistakes and at one point crashed into, I think it was bushes or maybe it was a sign at Tesla's headquarters when it was in self-parking mode. So we'll keep an eye on this story as it progresses. The biggest thing for me is not that Tesla is being sued over this, is that things come out in discovery and that's what uh, I find in the most interesting. I'm sure people who are suing Tesla who have a lot of money tied up in the company have other interests, but that's not, those aren't my interests. So we'll keep an eye on the story and I will update you as we get more information. All right, everybody, that is it for our show this week. Short and sweet. I do want to thank everybody who emailed in. I got a lot of really positive feedback from uh, the Tesla Investor Day episodes. I was actually very nervous about releasing three long back-to-back -back episodes. I thought that, honestly, I, I didn't think anybody would listen. And I got the most amount of feedback based on those episodes that I've ever gotten on anything. So that is fantastic. Thank you very much. I did promise stickers for those of you who listened to all three episodes all the way through. And honestly, if you didn't, I'll still send you some stickers. But um, I, I've sent all those stickers out in the mail. If you don't receive stickers in a week or two, please email me and I will send you uh, stickers again. I'm pretty sure I got everyone, but there were a lot of Johns and Davids and a few Michaels. The long and short of it is if you don't receive your stickers, let me know and I will get them out to you. Uh, it was a very chaotic week this week, a good week, but a very chaotic week. So yeah. Also, if I didn't email you back, uh, just send me a, a, a reminder email. I'm pretty sure I emailed everyone back as well. All right, everybody, that is it for me this week. You can email me, Bodie, B-O-D-I-E, at 918digital.com. And you can also find me on Twitter at 918digital. Yeah, I think that's it. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And on Tuesday, we'll be talking about Rivian's earnings call.